And here we are for the race. The drivers are on the grid here at the London XL Arena as the drivers will get underway for 14 laps of racing. There's all your drivers on the top left. Obviously, look out for your favourites. And as the lights come on, we're about to get underway for the London Formula E and Championship for 2023. Final race of the season. And coming towards Turn 1, looks like Mitchie Hoy is going to be leading the way as we come underneath the brakes. Oh, four wide oh. as we come in towards Turn 1. Heavy contact in behind. Logan Hannes dropped down. Caretha's dropped down as well. Oh, my goodness me. Look at this. We talked about pile-ups. Look at that. The Envision car up on the side of oh the my McLaren. God. Oh, my word. He's giving him a lift. Uh, trailing their way through the first sector. That is insane. Um, right, we, we knew this was going to be a bit of a still going on cam. Yeah, unfortunately, I think they're a bit stuck between each other. I don't know how they're <laughs> going to come apart. Hopefully, they may try to hit the wall to actually get themselves off. That might oh. be the way to do it. Uh, <laughs> I've never quite uh, seen before, but it looks like they're going to be able to just about uh, get underway. There but we go. After all of that, uh, that looks like it's going to be Maxine. That was third place in the championship as well. Maxine yeah. in that 10th place, unfortunately, having that contact. Yeah. I have no idea how that's oh. happened, even continuing into here. Oh my word, Formula E, they're into the side uh, of someone three wide into the second half, and that is never going to work well for you. But once again, up onto each other's bodywork. Cam, what on earth is going on? Oh, someone is backwards as well. The Mahindra machine has been spun around there, and all this is leading. Look at oh. the top two on the track map. They're absolutely getting away. Diaz Penske car has gone for a spin there. That's Kareth. After the contacts in the uh, races in Berlin and Rome, he's getting involved once more. Yeah, well, he's notorious for being the bullet, and this time he's been shot. Oh, my word, into uh, the hairpin at the back end of the circuit in turn 16. The look Cam just gave me up here, uh, here is says everything you need to know of course you guys down, down there can't really see that said everything uh, and the throttle trace that's going on here as well is incredible the telemetry uh, just goes to show how chaotic it is being the Mahindra and the Neo going um, very argy bargy Cam it must be said it's a very very good thing damage isn't on it's oh certainly and if we look at the track map top right side of the screen look at number one on the left side Mitchie Hoyer is absolutely flying away in first position we've got Sophia uh, in second place and we've got Gamer Muscle and Logan Hanna they're in a tight battle for that third and fourth position but also uh, this battle here for eighth ninth and tenth with uh, Motorsport That's Abbey late. and uh, Formula Antonio but that is way too late on the brakes for the Maserati car oh my word rejoins as well that is the most beautiful rejoin I think I've ever seen in sim racing to be fair sometimes even better than the professionals oh. the Maserati uh, taking a very interesting apex going in to uh, turn three, gets overtaken, of course, naturally so. And then uh, once again rejoining, trying to install as much <laughs> cost as possible to the fictional repair teams. Oh, uh, yeah, that's always pushing. Uh, yeah, that was uh, Ashley, I think, pushing. Uh, uh, I remember Maxime that was in that part of the track. Uh, we've got a massive field spread over the course of the London E Prix. Oh, there goes the Envision driver uh, once again of Ashley down there in that 10th place. But we're starting to spread out and get a nice view of all of these uh, corners. But I mean, as uh, this is definitely showing just how difficult it actually is to even make a lap around here, just showing how the uh, you know, the professionals really do have such sort of talent. It's not easy. It's not. Uh, and of course, one of the big talking points of yesterday was using that regenerative braking to slide the rear out because these Gen 3 Formula E cars, on their sim especially, don't really have the best of turning circles. So you can't drive it in the way you drive a Formula 1 car or a GT car, brake in a straight line, turn it in smoothly, hit the apex and accelerate outwards. It's slam the brakes on, get the rear end stepped out, try and control the slip angle, and then just plant your foot down, keep the throttle trace nice and linear to build up the traction and you know get off the apex. Unfortunately, not many people on this grid are going to be you know uh, talently inclined enough, if that's a word, it is now, because I've just said it is, um, to, to be able to be control the car in that way. Um, of course, with rigs they're not used to and expect Experience. It's, it takes a long time to build up their skills, the muscle memory and how to feel the car especially. Oh. Um, and yeah, well, we, the, the rear ends are getting out, just not in the right way. Yeah, a bit of a contact there. I think that's most for Abby and Kareth getting into each other um, during the first couple of corners of the lap. And it's certainly spread out quite a lot here. There's Maxine. We're saying uh, she was down in 10th place at one point, got back up into fifth place because of all the carnage and definitely a... Uh, uh, you know, a driver fighting for the championship positions being third place currently coming into this race. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be getting the, uh, the win today. But that Logan Hannah car in the fourth place just up ahead, that is uh, her championship rival. It is indeed. Uh, Maxime, of course, was that McLaren that was being ridden by the uh, Envision car right at the start of the race. That was something to see. Let's put it that way. Of course, running the way through turn 16, Formula Ina as well, a little bit further back. Good little bit of a battle here between uh, Kareth and uh, Abby. Uh, now as they run their way towards uh, oh. turn 16 and that is what we're talking about in terms of the bumps late on the brakes as well going in opens the door up for him on the inside however to be fair it was decent 
Yeah, Kreth got that move in the background. Uh, Marcel seemed to make a move as Ashley has uh, made Where's a mistake reverse? down at the uh, down at the hairpin. Go, basically, have to press both of these shift paddles and then the left one again to go into that reverse. That should be able to uh, get them out of the way, but it's certainly uh, an awkward brace. Oh, huge send oh. into the penultimate <laughs> corner. Kreth gets sent there by Motorsport Abbey. They somehow continue. Kreth just, well, he's been the... the um, well, he's been the deliverer of chaos. Now he's the <laughs> one that's receiving it uh, here in London. Uh, and, well, we had a, a word with him a little bit earlier on when we were doing the pit walk cam. And, yeah, he, he seemed like he was going to come out here and have a bit of fun. He's in a nice striking blazer. He's uh, in his sim rig and he's ready to deal some carnage. Yeah, definitely one of the, uh, the nicer looking uh, uh, drivers out there. But, actually, Scott is going to try and get a bit of an interview here with Mitchy Hoyer as he leads this race. Hey Mitchy, so as you are so far in front, I think you have what, almost a 20 second lead now. You got away great from the start. You've done a great couple of laps. There's been carnage behind you. So can you just talk us around uh, a lap here at the London e -Prix? Yeah, of course I can do that way. When we start like right on start finish line or in the middle of the lap. Because, yeah, okay. Okay, we, we just start here. This is turn nine, a right hand flick. We're going into the old version of the London e which still features the double hairpin, so you have to get heavy on the brakes, slow the car down, almost till step, step speed. Going around right, going around left for double hairpin and a short sprint up towards the tight chicane. You want to go early on the first apex to get as straight a possible exit on to the straight between 15 and 16. Here, right before the right hand king, you want to hit the brakes hard to not run wide. Stay tight here on the hairpin. Okay, Mitchy, thank you very much for driving us around. Now, that just goes to show your absolute talent, being able to speak like that while you're driving within millimeters of the wall. Right, let's go and speak to second position in the race at the moment. That's Hayden. Now, Hayden is subbing in for Sophia today. So let's go and interrupt his race. Hayden, Hayden, you're super subbing in uh, this weekend for Sophia. What do you think of the former e-car and the London e prix circuit? It's uh, it's definitely a new challenge to uh, to try and get used to, um, but enjoying it a lot. Enjoying this race with all these other influencers as well, and just trying to pick my way through the carnage. And um, after this interview, I would be very very happy if you can go over to uh, P1 and do a bit more distracting. I've already tried to do that, and uh, his undistractable so okay <laughs> i'm just going to move away from the speaker here because we're getting a little bit of feedback now let's speak to kirith kirith has been causing carnage in many of the other races that we've done this season kirith how are you getting on today well you know i've sent it on every drive in the grid i think i was disqualified from the last race started last year and i'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to absolutely none of the other drivers because they're all sending on me now is carnage Absolutely great racing with uh, Abby. I know she's very fast on two wheels, and we've been going side by side, and I've got a Formula Lina in my sights. I'm coming for the overtake Formula Lina. Now, I have to say, Scott, last time around, I hadn't had my Driver 61 coaching, but this time I have, and it's not quite working for me. What's going on, Scott? I'm down in seventh place. Please don't bring me into it, Kirith. Um, right, let's head up back to the casters for some commentary on the race. And it's amazing to see the, uh, the drivers being interviewed mid-race. You don't always get that, um, of course. But now on to, uh, to lap seven. There is uh, Michi Hoyer leading the way uh, in that Nissan car. And uh, Zach, he was actually seeing pretty calm there. I mean, yeah. he was doing a track guide mid-race. Yeah. I mean, Michi, obviously, he's known for doing his sort of POV streams of whatever race series he's doing. So he sort of knows how to read chat and keep his mind focused on a million different things at once while still trying to communicate and keep things interesting. So, uh, of course, Scott has pestered him uh, a lot over the last few weeks. So Mitchie's obviously used to dealing uh, with Scott, which, you know, it's not an easy thing. Let's put it that way. Um, and, yeah, he's doing a fantastic job out in front. Same too with Hayden, of course, who's subbing in for Sophia. Uh, very, very used to... Uh, oh, that was close. Um, to, to talking while driving, similar, obviously, to Kareth as well. Those streamers, they build up those skills of multitasking. So you're not... You know, you don't have to always be 100% focused on the driving. You can let your mind do other things as well. 
as we get in this really close battle. Uh, coming up towards the final couple of corners, oh. actually. Oh, huge send. All three of them going into the barrier there at turn 21. That is definitely some absolute carnage. Fortunately, as we said, the damage is off, so they can continue. Side by side down the straight, it seems to be, as Kareth there managed to get that Formula Ina Ina car, as he was obviously just saying, oh, huge there into the wall for the Envision a racing car. I think that's the uh, Ashley car, unfortunately, a lap down. As sadistic as this might be, I would love to see what this race would be like if we could have damage on. I would love to see <laughs> how much bodywork would be flying everywhere, how much of the track would be covered. But then again, there wouldn't be much of a car oh, left, and that is done. sideways into uh, the side of the uh, of the track. Formula Uno, this is brutal, Cam. It's a war zone out there. Yeah, this is definitely some Mario Kart kind of stuff. As uh, Crest got to get punted once again coming through turn nine. Pretty sure he ended up in the fence there. But this is, of course, big battles. This is championship points that they are going for. Coming in towards the double hairpin sequence now. Can they get the braking oh. done? Oh, no! As Ashley goes wide there, and that absolutely sends Abby out of the way. Kareth is going to be getting up to that seventh place. Trying to compensate for the lack of rear brakes by using other cars uh, as a set of <laughs> calipers and brake pads and brake discs in order to, to slow themselves down. Uh, unfortunately, that does require a large aspect of accuracy, and if you do miss, you are sending yourself flying into the, uh, into the barrier. Kareth at the moment uh, trying to take it nice and cautiously through turn 16. Uh, of course, they don't have to take uh, attack mode, uh, and we were talk talking to Nick, he said none of them are even clever enough to figure out how to work <laughs> attack mode, so uh, they, they don't have to worry about the extra 50 kilowatts of power. Kareth hitting every apex through that final sector. It's not, it's not bad. Definitely getting there. Of course, they've got 14 laps. There's a few laps yeah, to get yeah. to, uh, to learn uh, the track, learn the apexes. And as we were mentioning earlier, it's really not an easy track, as you're seeing. There's some proper tight corners and ones where you really have to get a bit of a uh, bit of a run going. And this is actually um, Michi Hoya here coming through to lap Kareth. These guys have had a bit of uh, argy-bargy so far oh. this season. Oh, Michi goes for up the inside of turn two. Can't quite make it stick. Here we go. Kareth has been, uh, again, as I say, notorious for being the bullet, especially when it comes to this man right here. Michi Hoya uh, has won a lot in sim racing. Uh, of course, races uh, with, with Burst and, um, of course, Burst have had a really good weekend with the Accelerate, with Jane Simicic taking the overall and uh, with Davin Rocek taking the uh, London uh, Formula Accelerate Championship as well. So he's definitely among... Uh, some high prestige in sim racing and Kareth says sod that oh. I'm doing whatever I like into the double hairpin uh, and pulls exactly what we've, we've been seeing in the real life Formula Recam in the free practice sessions uh, Kareth not lighting up the rears he's actually been able to find reverse gear which is quite impressive it definitely is, but unfortunately he wasn't able to find the braking points, <laughs> which is generally the more important factor that you need to find uh, in racing. But it's definitely a couple of close battles out there. And uh, that one, Kareth, and uh, most of all, Abby, they seem to be having uh, a bit of a ding-dong. I'm sure that one's going to go to the end of the race. Lap 9 now of 14 is going to be. We just saw Gamer Muscle there uh, briefly, having a nice, cl uh, calm race there in that P3 uh, with Logan Hanna in P4 behind. Yeah, indeed. So look oh! at that. Bosh! Boom! Backwards into the barrier goes Kareth. Pointing actually the right way. It's given him a really nice nice late apex to get a good exit into turn 17. So I suppose there's silver linings to everything. Uh, Kareth, I, I do feel bad for him. He's, he's, he's faced a lot of adversity here You feel bad for London. him? He's taking people out as well. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to give it and take it, I suppose, Cam. Oh, he hasn't made that corner for the uh, eighth time of asking. But uh, he actually seems like he's got a bit of a gap there. That hit from Oswal Abbey, I don't think it was yeah. timed uh, at the right moment. We've got a couple of seconds between them now as they come on to uh, start the next a uh, lap of the race for these drivers. And of course, it's definitely uh, you know a big occasion for these guys, and they're certainly trying very hard to get these places. Yeah, I do wonder what the crowd thinks as well. We've got a huge, huge amount of people here in the fan village. Of course, you're all, you've all stuck around for this long. We're on at lap nine of 14, and you're still keeping your eyes firmly peeled. So I'm sure you are all thoroughly entertained uh, with, I don't really know what to describe it with, Cam. Uh, what, what, what word can be used to describe this? Carnage, chaos, it's, it's kind of exciting. It's in through, uh, there's not a word that really sums it all up. Well, it's the, the Formula E Amps race. That is That's pretty true. much uh, what, we're, what we're seeing here. It's As, influenced. Uh, of course, it's the literally influenced quite, uh, uh, yeah, quite by definition. Oh, that's oh. a huge uh, slide there out of the, uh, out of the corner. They're almost making contact with the Avalanche Pensy car. That is a Formula E putting a lap there on a Formula Antonia uh, coming in towards the hairpin. Oh, both, uh, both of them go way too deep. Hit the wall. Fortunately, they can bounce off it quite nicely. You're right, actually. That corner, it sort of points you in the right direction if you actually make a mistake. Yeah, I do love how we have got the electric passenger rides going on behind us. The tyre schools are very well timed uh, with that, like that shot there going into the hairpin. Timed really nicely with the, with the carnage that ensues uh, on track. And now, 
uh, as they work their way through turn 17. Motorsport Abbey, of course, in uh, eighth place on the back, trying to seek revenge. I don't even know, is it vengeance, revenge on Kareth at this point? Is, uh, are, they, are they broken even yet in terms of their chaos? I haven't been uh, counting, but they've certainly hit each other a few times as there goes uh, Ashiel uh, coming through the second of the hairpins. It's definitely actually quite difficult. Um, what you, it, basically, you're going around a single point. It's just one concrete wall, so it's a very tight hairpin. And unfortunately, uh, them going wide uh, a couple of laps down all oh. day, because getting very close in towards turn one and turn two. Maserati, they have Antonia hitting the <laughs> both walls there in the first couple of corners. Yep, uh, I suppose <laughs> the, the walls follow the track. So if you follow the walls, you, you're going to follow the track, I suppose. Uh, we saw it in NASCAR at one of the stadium races where a driver just floored it around the outside, uh, Gran Turismo style, really. Maybe that sort of philosophy is showing here. I don't think it's the quickest way around the track, Cam, but it's certainly one way of doing it. Yeah, it's definitely one. I don't know, actually, I don't know if it's uh, what's going to be it's getting It's a them. racing line, not the racing line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's what's going to be getting them positions. But here is Abby now coming up towards the back of Antonio, looking to the inside of the hairpin. That's actually difficult. It makes it tight, but actually avoids the Maserati car there going uh, wide into the wall. Oh, no, they come Sense. back, actually. This is side by side in towards a very tight chicane. And unfortunately, Abby there is going to have to back out of it. Nice move by Antonio, sliding on the exit, though. Beautiful. And through goes Abby a second time. Beautiful racing, it must be said. Unfortunately, all ruined by the Maserati from going side sideways on the uh, following chicane. Now they've got to do all the hard work again. Oh! Chucking it full lock. Beautiful dodge from Abby there. And, well, very, very poor uh, target practice there for, for Marcel. I tell you, I definitely enjoyed this race, though. Definitely saw a yeah. bit different it's to, been what, different. Uh, to what we're used to. But, of course, a bit of fun uh, for these drives. Abby there getting a pretty decent line, actually. Unfortunately, uh, dropped off quite a bit from Kareth. Kareth uh, uh, there on track, coming through turns one and two. Actually, Kareth getting close to Formula Ina uh, to try and get up that position that he had uh, just a little bit earlier on. So definitely a few close battles still here as we're coming into the last few laps of this race. We are indeed. Uh, I think Nick is taking some notes for next season's Accelerate because I think we need just a, a fun one-off race for triple championship points. Just no rules go at it every man for themselves. I think that would make for a very interesting turn of events uh, if we uh, come back to London for our finale. Former Antonia in the Maserati, of course. Uh, one of the uh, 11 drivers on this grid that are going to be very, very fortunate that we haven't turned damage on. Uh, Marcel, very civilly working uh, their way through uh, the circuit, trying to keep it out of the wall for the most part, which really hasn't been easy, it must be said. Now into the closing stages, lap 11 uh, of 14. Uh, and now we've got a good little battle here for Marina trying to go to the outside over the bump, tapping the barrier, full oh. lock on, and that was an attack on the attack. Oh, but here comes Kareth to go through, actually, getting that sixth place as we come around the long left-handed corner in towards the tight chicane. Oh, oh. more contact happening here with Abby and Antonia. Yeah, well, that was certainly something. This race has certainly been something. Um, and, yeah, we always like a little bit of fun, a little bit of carnage, a little bit of chaos. And well, that's exactly what this has been. Formula E has been able to work at their way past Kareth as well, back into sixth place. Here's Michi Hoyer. And, well, he's been a bit boy. He's 30 seconds in front, Cam. What's this? I think we need to do a petition that he has to stop, <laughs> do a few donuts on oh, the yeah. track, and then continue. Something like that. As there's more contact with the uh, Mahindra car going in reverse there. I come through the final couple of corners. Mitchie's just got one and a half laps to go, actually, in this race. It's starting to get a bit of a close battle. Three cars uh, coming down the hill and towards turn six. I'm not sure if, if Kareth, whoever is closest to the speakers, can hear me. But... I'll, I don't know. I'll give you a Freddo if you take Mitchie Hoyer out or something. Slow a him down. Freddo? A fr Mate. They're, they're worth they're, a lot of they're money They're nowadays. worth a lot of money, exactly. Um, I might ask David if he can slide me some of his paycheck from the Accelerate to be able to afford that. But Kareth, uh, he's more interested, really, rather than on Mitchie Hoyer, on his own little scuffle here for sixth. He's up two places, to be fair to him. And there's uh, Maxine there coming across the line. All five cars all close to each other coming through the double uh, hairpin sequence of corners. Trying to work out exactly uh, where these drivers are on track. It looks like sixth place. Formula Ina leading that train and just in behind. I think it's actually... Uh, ooh, trying to work out who it is. That might be Maxine actually getting involved. Actually, it's Gamer Muscle, isn't it? Gamer Muscle is there trying to come round the outside uh, before the DS Penske of Karev is getting involved as Mitch Hoy has already started his final lap. He has indeed, and he's doing a brilliant job out in front. And yeah, the fact that this graphic is showing lap 12 or 14 while Mitchie Hoyer uh, is uh, chilling now through turn six and seven, now through eight outside, of course, the Accelerina. Here's Kareth as that's into the barrier as well from uh, one of the Mahindra's Formula E into uh, now back into seventh place. Uh, but yeah, I, d I don't know how to describe this race, Cam. It's just, just <laughs> been, uh, I don't know, I've enjoyed it, but I think I've enjoyed it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, it's definitely been, <laughs> been 
been something a, a little bit different. Oh, as he oh, hits the curb there, coming towards turn one. Yellow flags briefly out after uh, that DS Penske car of Kareth coming on to lap 13. This will be the final lap of the race, though, because the finish will be dictated by the leader, who is currently Michi Hoyer, one lap ahead of these drivers, coming in towards the final chicane now, through this very tight and twisty uh, first sector for Kareth. He is Mitchie Hoyer, of course, you can see in the track map, uh, working his way through the long left-hander of turn 17 into 18, 19, 20, then uh, up over the rise into the final couple of corners at 21 and 22. Well, Mitchie Hoyer, well, he's three wins in three, and he's won the championship or something. Yeah, Mitchie Hoyer's going to be absolutely loving this one, weaving his way across the line to take victory here at the London XL for the Formula E Amps race for 2023. And with that, the championship Boom. in celebration comes our Formula Antonio there across the line. And of course, the drivers are quite way behind, actually. They still got a few corners to go to finish their lap. It's going to be Sophia, or actually driven by Hayden, uh, in this race coming through in second place so they can come through these final couple of corners. Yeah, actually, I don't think being able to find reverse once again. Double tap both pedals, press the left one again, get yourself back to neutral, then put it into reverse. Uh, here comes Hayden Gullis, of course. Uh, a very interesting way of celebrating. Uh, I'd say it's been good driving, Cam, but I don't even know if you can call it driving. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly being uh, cars going around a track, driving is, uh, <laughs> is a definition that we'll have to come Strong through word. Uh, another day. But here is Hayden across the line to take second place, weaving their way uh, to that wonderful uh, finish. Actually, a, a pretty clean race from them, actually, uh, in the end of it. Here is, of course, the final few drivers coming across the line. Game of Muscle will be taking third place. So Logan Hanna actually not too far behind in that fourth. Of course, Logan sitting second place in the championship. Uh, coming into this one, should be able to secure that with this finish. Yep, should be able to uh, indeed. Just a little bit of pride, really. We were talking, they don't necessarily get a prize. They just get something to uh, put lovely into their social media bi bios and uh, have a, a nice little Formula E Accelerate Amped um, championship finish next to their name. Maxime, of course, across the line in fifth place, uh, was behind Logan and Mitchie in the championship, Cross the line uh, in the McLaren uh, to take third, and then for good measure gets tapped by the Mahindra. And then, of course, as cool-down lap shenanigans go, this is... Yeah, it, it, it's been uh, uh, shenanigans. Uh, absolutely has. It's certainly been an entertaining race here. Uh, guys, imagine. Very interesting scenes, but it's certainly been a uh, very uh, nice race here. Around the uh, around the London XL, it's only been something a little bit different to what we're normally used to. It is, yeah. I mean, we've been around in sim racing for two, two and a half years, whatever it is, uh, and yeah, we've not quite been able to see something uh, as extraordinary as this. I mean, we've done ovals, we've done um, you know interesting, uh, interesting races, interesting formats, you know NASCAR, stock car, those types of things, but we've never quite seen anything like this. 